Okay. So I'm going to ta talk to you a bit about, guys, today we're, we're going to look at perfect squares. Tomorrow we're going to look at difference of squares. Difference of squares versus perfect squares. Okay. Um, so what I'd like you to do is p plus q times p. Remember we like talked about square? When you have a square, what do you have to do? It write it twice. So you write it as p plus q times p plus q. Or q minus q squared would be p minus q times p minus q. So if we expanded this, there's not that much room here. P times P. P squared. P times a positive Q. Is P Q. How would you write Q times P? Q P or P Q. And if we keep it alphabetical, it's easier to see that those are like terms. Right? A B is the same thing as B A. Because it's a product. 2 times 3, 3 times 2, same thing. And then last, q times q, q squared. So in a perfect square, what's going to happen, because they're identical, this middle term will always be the same. It's always going to be the same. So if it was 2pq, and it would be another 2pq. Those middle two will be the same, and then we add them together, which gives you, in this case, if I have 1pq plus 1pq, how many pqs do I have? Two PQs. Okay, so that would be the expansion of this. Now this would be the pretty much identical. The only difference is is the signs of the middle. Okay, when we expand this, we have P times P, which is P squared, right? P times negative Q, negative PQ. Again, this is red. Negative Q times P, negative PQ, and then what if you do negative Q times negative Q plus Q squared? So the only difference is, is the middle term negative P, 2 PQ. They're negative, right? So, but the same, everything else is the same, right? Both of these are perfect squares. So when a perfect square, if you have a perfect square, the last term and the first term, should be, you should be able to square root them. It's not always going to be a perfect square, but looking at, like, for example, example one, this could possibly be a perfect square because can I be square root the first and the last? Yeah, they're both perfect squares. So what's the pattern? Well, let's take a look here. Let's factor this how we normally would. Okay? What are the two numbers we'd use for the a squared? 1a and 1a, right? 1 and 1. What two numbers are we going to try for this one? 2 and 2. If it's possibly a perfect square, it's possible that they're the same. Would that work? Would that make a middle term of 4? Yeah. So the square, when you square root those, okay, and double it, should be the middle term. Because notice that this is factors to a plus 2 times a plus 2 squared. Let's try the next guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zoom in. Big. Make it nice and big. There we go. That's much better. Okay, the next guy. Okay, what would you use? X and X are 1 and 1, right? 1X, 1X. 6. Is that possibly a perfect square? No. So, no. The question is, that which of the following is a perfect square? So this one is not, because you can't square root the 6. It's not going to be a perfect square. How about the next one? Is it possibly a perfect square? Yeah, it's possibly, because if you look at the first and last, can you square root 4x squared and 81? Yeah, so let's double check. So 2x and 2x. What would a square root of 81 give you? 9. And through the diagonals, we want to make negative 36. So what do we need for the signs? 
one negative or both? both. We want to make a positive 81. Both negative. Because we want a positive. So uh, 2 times 9, what does that give you? Negative 18. Or sorry, I forgot to say negative 9. And 2 times negative 9, does that add to negative 36? Yeah, so is this a perfect square? Yeah, so um, really, we're just going to factor we, as we normally do with the crisscross method. Or guess and check. This method here, we'll do the same. It's, you can kind of spot when something would possibly be a perfect square. It's if these two you can square root. And if you notice, 2 times 9 doubled gives you the middle term, then it would be a perfect square. Yep. Uh, there is no GCF. You still do. You still do. You always do that first. It just happens to be no GCF. Yeah. Okay. So, if this was a perfect square, let's skip A and B. Go to C. If this was a perfect square, okay, they're telling us it is a perfect square, what were the two numbers going to have to be underneath 25? 5 and 5. What are the two numbers that are have to be under 36? 6 and 6. So what would the middle term have to be? It's not close. So 5 times 6 is 30. And this one, 5 times 6 is 30. So the middle term would be double of it. So double, whoa. <laughs> Having a bad day. 60x. It has to be 60x. Right? This times this doubles. Because of the same, a 30 and a 30, that's why it's double. So if this was a perfect square, okay? What would the first, <coughs> the 9 have to be? Hi. Do you have any problems with the files you worked on today or yesterday? No. Okay, just check. Okay, I'll yeah. let you know if I do. What? Yeah. Yeah. Greg was having problems with basically the files where you had to stay to have. Oh. Because they were opened by someone else. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. Just checking. Okay. Thanks. So that would have to be a 3 and a 3, agreed? Okay. We want the middle to add to 12. Right? Or 24. Sorry. The middle term to add to 24. So, because it's a perfect square, we want the diagonals to be the same. So what's the product going to be for each one of these? Oh, you're ahead of me. Yes. They each have to be 4 because we want to make what? 12 and 12. We want each diagonal to be 12 and 12 to add to the 24. So 3 times 4 would make 12. So I think somebody already said it. What would this number have to be? 16 for it to be a perfect square. You try factoring three, number A, letter A, number A. Factor three A. Okay, 10, easy, 7, 7, 1, 1, but what do you need for the signs of the 1s? Both negative to make negative 14, because you want your middle term to be negative and your product positive, so they both are negative. So your answer should be 7x minus 1 squared, or I'd accept 7x minus 1 times 7x minus 1. You would not lose marks if you wrote that, okay? All right, turn the page. We just have to go through 366 and 367, and we're done. So just start some example 4, 5, and 6. That's it. And that's today's lesson. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, this is just a whole lot of talking. Let's get to the example. So when you have something like this, um, 
we're going to treat it just like you would x squared plus x plus constant. Okay? So a power of 4, as long as it's an even power, we can factor it. Um, the, middle, the middle should always be half of the, of the exponent of the first. Okay? And you'll see how it'll work out in a second. So if I had a 1 here, what would my two numbers be? 1a squared and 1a squared. So to multiply to a4, it's going to be at a squared times a squared. Okay? To multiply to 14, what, did you, what do you want to try? Negative 7 and a positive 2. And that's perfect, Zira, because we want to make it negative 5. Right? 1 times 2 plus negative 7, does that make negative 5? Well, yeah, negative 7 and positive 2 make negative 5, okay? But really, when you foil this out, it'd actually be two a, negative 7 a squared and 2 a squared. And that combines to be negative 5 a squared. That's where that a squared middle term comes from. So what does this factor to then? 1 a squared minus 7. 1a squared plus 2. And you can write the 1 if you want. You don't have to. That's it. Okay. Do you want to try B? Okay. Thanks. Um, right down here. Okay. C. Like that has a fraction. Normally what I would say is you need to factor the fraction out. So we're going to actually factor 1 9th out of this. And so if you want to factor it out, you're dividing everything by 1 9th. So this guy's easy, right? Pulling out 1 9th out of 1 9th is just 1. Negative 2 divided by 1 9th. Does anyone want to take a guess what that's going to turn into? It's going to become larger. If you're pulling out a fraction, dividing by a fraction, it actually becomes a larger number. It turns into negative 18. When you take negative 2 and you divide it by 1 9th, when you divide fractions, what do we do? Multiply by the reciprocal. We multiply by the reciprocal. And so that's why it turns into negative 18. And so what do you think this would be? 81 b squared. And then you would factor it from, oops, got a 1. And then you would just factor normally. So if you ever do have fractions, we pull that fraction out. Okay? And so then that would be a, it turns out to be a minus 9b squared. It's a perfect square when we factor it. Okay, but so if you have a fraction, we factor it out. Normally we cover that more in AP because, yeah, you're, you're not really going to have those questions on your test. Okay? Yeah. All right, did we finish here? Good enough. Well, just really quickly, what do you think x to the 6 is going to break into? x cubed. Yeah, x cubed and x cubed. Okay, and my two numbers for 14, multiply to 14, add to negative 9. Negative 2 and negative 7 would make negative 9 and a positive 14 product. Okay, so not so bad. Same idea, same thing. Same thing? Sort of? All right, last page we're going to look at. Um, it's really the same stuff. Just higher power, a couple more higher, power, higher powers. Always double, double check. I can't speak today. <laughs> uh, I hate days like that. Always check for GCF. Does this have a GCF? No. Okay, so how are we going to factor this guy? Any guess? Where do you want to start? Okay, 2x squared and 2x squared we'll try. They did a little bit of a guess and check. What numbers do you want to try for 6? Sure, 3 and 2. Let's just see if we get lucky. 4 and a 6. Will that work? Yes, one of them has to be a negative. But I'm going to put the signs in later just to see if I can make negative 5. 
So is there any way to make negative 5 out of 6 and 4 if one of them was negative? No. Okay, so then let's try switching 2 and... Well, switching 2 and 3, would that make a difference? No. Okay, what else do you want to try now? 1 and 6. So I like to put my negatives in later once I do my diagonals. So 2 and 12. Can you make... Can you make negative 5 out of that somehow? No. Okay, so what do we have to actually switch? The 2s has to turn into instead 4 and 1. Okay, let's try the 6. We'll try it like this for now and see if we can make... So 4 and 6. Can we still... No. Can't make 5 out of that. So now what are we going to try? 2 and 3. Okay, let's try it this way. 4 times 3 is 12. And 2? Nope. Man, I took the long route. The scenic route. Try and switch it with 3 and 2 now. Yay! Feels so good when you finally get it. 8 and 3. Can we make negative 5? Who has to be negative? Nope. The 8. So that means the... The two, you want to decide it. So that factors to 4x squared plus 3 and x squared minus 2. Uh, can we skip B? Do you know what it turned into for the y10? Five, why five, why five? Okay, good. Let's do C. Let's skip that too. No, let's yeah. do this one. It's a little different because there's two variables. Yeah, that's stupid. Okay, is there a GCF, Tejkar? No. Are you sure? You're just trusting Sira. Okay, <laughs> Should you trust her? Yeah. Okay, she's right. She no. <laughs> okay, so two has to break into. You. 1 times 2. Now, what do you think the variables are actually going to be here? A, B, and 1, A, B. So 2, A, B, and 1, A, B. Your middle term kind of gives you the hint. Uh, we have to make 99. Lucky number 99. It's Kretzky's number. Hey, hey Kretzky. I know. I don't have that kind of money. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I don't, I don't have that much money, though, so... Are you going? Huh? You're not going. I am. What's up, brother? I'm rich. I'm not rich. <laughs> it's so crazy how much we're going. Anyways, 99. What do you want to try? 33 and... 3? 33 and 2? That doesn't multiply to 99. That's 69. That's 69. Oh, no, it's 66 actually. <laughs> Tejkarn, you don't know how to do your math. Okay, so that gives me 6 and 33. That's not good. What if I switch them? Yes? If I switch them. Where's my eraser when you need it? There you go. 3 and 33. So, that doesn't work. Oh. No, it actually is a lot faster than the alternative. Can we do the other method? I can show it to you. Yeah, sure. Right now. In a second. Okay, not 33. How about 11? 11 times 9. Where should we put the 11? Okay, try that. 18 and 11. Can we make negative? Nope. Okay, try again. Switch the 9 and 11. Hey, guys. Well, I say you go and brown. I'm brown Exactly. Okay, can we make, finally, can we make negative 31? Yes, if they're both what? Negative. They're both negative, and that would still give me my positive product. So this would factor 2. QAB minus 9. And 1AB minus 11. 
mine is gonna open. Where did my little clipper go? We, you know what, we are, just for fun. Um, the grouping method, you don't have to write this down. You can just listen if you'd like. Okay. The grouping method says you want two numbers that multiply to a times c, the first times the last. Okay, so we need two numbers in this case that multiply to negative 24. And then those two numbers also need to sum to the middle, the b. Okay, so I'm going to show you the grouping method just for fun. Okay, so in this case it would be 10. I think you asked for this, Tejra. So give me two numbers that, uh, oops, wrong sign. Add to 10, but multiply to negative 24. Nope. Because we need one positive, one negative. Right? If we're going to multiply to a negative, one positive, one negative. 12 and... Negative 2. 12 and negative 2. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to break up the middle term. You're going to uncollect like terms. This is the opposite of FOIL. So this becomes 8x to the 4 plus 12x squared minus 2x squared minus 3. Do you see how it's still equal to the expression above? We did collect like terms. So from there, do you remember early on, very first lesson of factoring, you learned about grouping? So then you would group. Okay? So what can you factor out of the first two? 4 and x squared. So I'm going to factor 4 and x squared out of the first two. And that gives me 2x squared plus 12 divided by 4? 12 divided by 4. 3. Okay. Now we want to make this set, second set of brackets the exact same thing. I forgot to square. Okay, so what will I factor out of those two? The negative one. Okay, I factor the negative one out because I want those brackets to be the same. So now that's my GCF. You pull out 2x squared plus 3 and you're left with hedge crunch. 4x squared minus 1. Okay, now this we're going to learn about tomorrow. We can actually factor further. But that's tomorrow's lesson. This is a completely algebraic method. So many er areas you can make little mistakes on. And students have taught this way before. It's like the only way. It doesn't go well. The, the most success students have is with the guess and tech test crisscross. It's fast, right? And you're not going to make all little ma algebraic mistakes. Exactly, right? No, I understand. Well, and if you, like, yeah, there's so many areas with students that make mistakes. It's not fun. All right, so we're done.